Before next week, please finish reading the play. Uh, and then uh, next week, after discussing the questions, I will introduce the next unit on Paradise Lost, and I will also hand out the next handout. Uh, so make sure to come and grab the new handout next week. Uh, I have heard from some of you that this play is not easy to read. I know it's not easy to read. I warned you in the first week, it's not easy to read. So if uh, you find that you don't have enough time to finish reading before class, or maybe you read and then you get lost and you're confused, you don't know what's going on. One thing you can do is you can take a look at the PowerPoint that I put on Moodle. Uh, because the questions that we discuss each week are the parts of the play that I think are important or more important. So you can use those questions to guide your reading, uh, to help you find a direction if you get lost, or to help save some time if you don't have enough time. And then of course, uh, the one reason I have you divide into groups to discuss these questions is also because I know that not everyone has finished reading. So in the process of discussing, you can also try to catch up and figure out the parts that you did not manage to finish reading. Um, Paradise Lost, our next unit, I think there's a Chinese version somewhere. So if, if you really don't have any other way to catch up, maybe you can look for that. That's next week. Let's uh, go back to the beginning of this week's reading, which is Act 2, Scene 3. On page 687. Enter Richardetto and Philotis. So if you remember, Richardetto is the doctor and Philotis is his niece. Uh, Wai Senu. Thou seest, my lovely niece, these strange mishaps. Uh, so you see how I keep on getting into these strange situations or accidents. A mishap today means an accident. How all my fortunes turn to my disgrace. So all of these good things that happen to me turn into something bad for me. Wherein, where, wherein means in which. This is actually a, a rule of grammar that not many people talk about. Uh, today we say preposition plus which, right? In which, for which, by which, to which. In the past they said where plus preposition. Wherein, wherefore, where to, whereby. Uh, even today in legal language, you will sometimes see the where instead of which. And uh, one place in modern English where we still do this is uh, sometimes you will hear someone say uh, a situation where or in the case where. They don't mean the place, they mean where in. So the situation in which or the case in which. But today people often skip the in part. They only say where. So if you're ever confused about why someone would use where when there's no actual place, it's because they're using the word where in. So in these uh, accidents, I am but as a looker on. I'm like a bystander. While others act my shame and I am silent. So he's telling his niece, you see how my life has been taken out of my control. All of these strange events uh, are happening to me and turning my good fortune into bad fortune, and I can't do anything about it. I can only look at these things happening. Philotus, but uncle, wherein can this borrowed shape give you content? Uh, so she's asking why why he is in disguise. 
right? Remember at this point, Richard Detto is pretending to be a doctor. The, the beginning of the play even tells us uh, the actor's names, Richard Detto, a supposed physician, which means people think he is a doctor. So Philot is asking her, is asking him, uh, how can you be satisfied with this disguise, this borrowed shape? Richard Detto, I'll tell thee, gentle niece, thy wanton aunt in her lascivious riots lives now secure, thinks I am surely dead in my late journey to Ligorni for you, as I have caused it to be rumored out. So he's in disguise because his wife, Philotus' his aunt, his wife, is lascivious, which means lustful, full of sexual desire. In other words, his wife has been cheating on him. And uh, now that she thinks he's dead, uh, he uh, supposedly he took a journey to a place called Ligorni and he died on the way. So now that she thinks he's dead, she can live openly uh, and doesn't have to worry about people judging her for cheating on her husband. And of course, uh, his wife is Hippolyta. If you read uh, Act 3, Scene 2, uh, that scene is Hippolyta confronting Vasquez because Hippolyta's lover is Soranzo. And she, uh, Soranzo had promised to marry her after she uh, divorced uh, Richard Detto or after Richard Detto died. But then Richard Detto dies and Soranzo ignores her. So now she's really pissed at Soranzo and she's trying to find him to fight him or something. And Soranzo's servant Vasquez uh, blocks her and doesn't let her meet him. So now the story is starting to come together. We can start to see the different plots. Uh, so Richard Detto is pretending to be dead, and now he's a doctor. Uh, line 11. Now would I see with what an impudence she gives scope to her loose adultery. Uh, impudence means mimu zandam. So I've taken this disguise to find out uh, how terrible my wife really is and how the common voice allows hereof, which means he also wants to find out what other people are saying about his wife. Uh, again, hereof, right, means of this. What the ordinary people are saying about this. Thus far I have prevailed. So, so far I am successful. Nobody has discovered my true identity. Philotus, alas, in Chinese is I. I fear you mean some strange revenge. So she's saying, uh oh, you're not going to do something evil and take revenge, are you? Strange doesn't mean strange. Strange means like evil, uh, improper, not just weird, but like bad. So I fear you mean some strange revenge, Richard Detto. Oh, be not troubled. So don't worry. Your ignorance shall plead for you and all. Uh, he's basically he's saying So will is he trying to take revenge? Uh, he's saying if you don't know the answer, you can't get in trouble. Uh, shall plead for you. This is like when if you if you go to a court and the court will ask you, do you plead guilty or not guilty? So your ignorance will plead for you. You can say, I don't know. Uh, if one day you are dragged before a court, you can say, you can honestly say you don't know. But to our business, so and I want to talk to you about something, to our business. What you learned for certain how Signor Florio means to give his daughter in marriage to Soranzo? So are you sure Florio is going to let Annabella marry Soranzo? Philotus, yes, for certain. Richard Etto, but how find you young Annabella's love inclined to him? 
Okay, so Florio wants Annabella to marry Serenzo. What does Annabella feel about this? Does she love him? Is her love inclined to him? Philotus, for aunt I could perceive, she neither fancies him or any else. So aught here means anything. So no matter what I tried to notice, what I tried to observe, uh, it seems like she doesn't like him and she doesn't like any other man either. Fancy here means love or like. So she neither fancies him or any else. Richard Eto. Ah, there's mystery in that which time must show. So this is kind of like he's talking to himself. He's like, huh, this is strange. I bet the reason will, uh, for this will appear soon enough. And then she, uh, he asks uh, Philotus, she used you kindly, which means she treated you kindly? Yes. And craved your company? He, she liked to be with you, liked to be around you? Often. Tis well, which means good. It goes as I could wish. I am the doctor now, and as for you, none knows you. Nobody knows who you are. If all fail not, we shall thrive. So if everything succeeds, we will win. So there's some kind of plot. He's also planning something. But who comes here? Like he hears a sound or something. But who comes here? Who's here? Enter Grimaldi. I know him. Tis Grimaldi, a Roman and a soldier, near, ally, uh, near allied unto the Duke of Montferrato. So now he's giving a short history of Grimaldi. He used to fight for the Duke of Montferrato, one attending on the nuncio of the Pope that now resides in Parma. Ah, so he used to fight for this Duke and the Duke used to serve the nuncio and the nuncio is the Cardinal that is currently in Parma. So later on when the Cardinal saves him, this is the connection. Uh, that now resides in Parma, by which means he hopes to get the love of Annabella. So Grimaldi also wants to marry Annabella, and the way that he's trying to win her is by having the cardinal try to influence her. Okay, Grimaldi says, save you, sir, which means hello. Uh, so when Richardetto was talking about who Grimaldi is, He's kind of talking to his niece and Grimaldi can't hear him. But now that Grimaldi has entered into the scene, they greet each other. Grimaldi says, save you, sir, Richardetto, and you, sir. I have heard of your approved skill, which through the city is freely talked of and would crave your aid. So I've heard that you're a good doctor. Everyone in the city says you're a good doctor. I need your help. For what, sir? Mary, sir. Mary, it does not mean Mary. Mary is an interjection. Mary, sir, for this. But I would speak in private. Which means like he, he wants to talk to Richardetto without Philotus nearby. He doesn't want anyone else to hear. So Richardetto says, leave us, cousin. Again, cousin means any relative, any family, in those days was called cousin. So leave us cousin, exit Philotus. Philotus leaves the stage. So on stage now is just Grimaldi and Richardetto. Grimaldi, I love fair Annabella and would know whether in arts there may not be receipts to move affection. So he's asking whether in medicine, the arts, there is a recipe or some kind of formula to move affection, to affect the feelings. So he's asking for a love medicine. Sir, perhaps there may, but these will nothing profit you. These will do you no good. Not me? Unless I be mistook, you are a man greatly in favor with the cardinal. 
uh, in favor with, so like the cardinal likes him, like he, the, they have a good relationship. And Grimaldi starts to get a bit defensive. He doesn't say yes or no. He says, what of that? Which is suede. In duty to his grace, the cardinal, I will be bold to tell you, I will directly tell you, if you seek to marry Florio's daughter, you must first remove a bar twixt you and her. So if you want to marry Annabella, you have to remove one obstacle between you and her. And Grimaldi says, who's that? Soranzo is the man that hath her heart. And while he lives, be sure you cannot speed. Speed means succeed. So as while Soranzo lives, you will not succeed. So what is Richardetto really telling him? If you want to marry Annabella, you have to kill Soranzo first. So that's Richardetto's plot. It's a good, it's actually a good plan, right? Uh, Richardetto's wife cheats on him with Soranzo. And now Richardetto has found a way to kill Soranzo and not be blamed for it. It's a good plan. Uh, okay, Grimaldi says, Soranzo, what? Mine enemy, is he? Richardetto, is he your enemy? The man I hate worse than confusion. Confusion here doesn't mean confusion. Confusion means hell. I hate him worse than hell. I'll kill him straight. Straight means directly. So I'll kill him right now. Nay, which means no. Then take mine advice, even for his grace's sake, the cardinal. So he's saying, wait, 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 listen to me. And if you won't listen to me, listen to me for the sake of the cardinal. So like, if you're not thinking about your own benefit, think about the harm that you will cause to the cardinal's image if someone he's connected with does something foolish like this. So even for his grace's sake, the cardinal, take mine advice. I'll find a time when he and she do meet. This is Soranzo and Annabella. Of which I'll give you notice. So I'll tell you when they meet. And to be sure, he shall not escape you. He will not escape. I'll provide a poison to dip your rapier's point in. A rapier is a short sword. It's a weapon. So I'll give you poison. You can dip your sword in the poison. If he had as many heads as Hydra had, he dies. Hydra, I'm sure you know from watching the Avengers, is the ancient Greek monster. It, it's a snake. It's a snake with a, a hundred heads. And if you if you cut off one head, it will grow back three heads. So here, uh, Richard Detto says, uh, even if Soranzo had as many heads as a Hydra, he would die if you follow my advice. But shall I trust thee, doctor? OK, if you don't know whether to trust someone, asking this question is not how to find out. You don't ask, should I trust you? Obviously, the other person will say, yes, you should trust me. Uh, but that's what Grimaldi says. Shall I trust thee, doctor? As yourself, doubt not in aught. So trust me like you trust yourself. Don't doubt anything. Aside. Aside means he's talking to himself. Thus shall the fates decree by me, Soranzo falls that ruined me. So he's, he's telling himself, this is how I will kill Soranzo. Exeunt. Exeunt means everybody leaves this stage. So uh, Act 2, Scene 3, we get a glimpse of Richard Detto's plan to take revenge on Soranzo. The story starts getting a little bit complicated. Act 2, Scene 4. Enter Donato, Berghetto, and Poggio, these two clowns. 
Well, sir, I must be content to be both your secretary and your messenger myself. Which means he will write a letter and he will send the letter. I cannot tell what this letter may work, so I don't know if this letter will work. But as sure as I am alive, if thou come once to talk with her, I fear thou would mar whatsoever I make. So I don't know if this letter that I'm writing for you will work. What I do know is that if you say anything to Annabella, your chances are ruined. You'll never marry her. No matter what I do. You make uncle. Because at the end, Donato says whatsoever I make, which means whatever I do, whatever I try to do. So Bergetto says you make uncle. Why am not I big enough to carry my own letter? I pray. I I carry a fool's head on thy own. 就是用中文讲，就是 Bergetto 就问说，难道信我不能自己送吗？然后 Donato 的回应基本上就是送你妈头了，基本上就是这意思了。Why thou dunce? Dunce means idiot. Wouldst thou write a letter and carry it thyself? You think you know how to write this kind of letter and how to deliver it? Yes, that I would, and read it to her with my own mouth. For you must think, if she will not believe me myself when she hears me speak, she will not believe another's handwriting. Oh, you think I am a blockhead, Uncle? You think my this head is a blockhead? No, sir. Poggio knows I have indicted a letter myself, so I have. So now Bergetto says, Ah, actually, I have already written a letter. Poggio, yes, truly, sir, I have it in my pocket. A sweet one, no doubt. No doubt, it's a sweet letter. He's being sarcastic. Pray, let's see it. Pray means please. So, okay, let's see your letter. I cannot read my own hand very well, Poggio. Read it, Poggio. Begin. Poggio reads. So now he's reading Bergetto's letter, his beautiful love letter. <laughs> Most dainty and honey sweet mistress. It's like a, like a dessert. I could call you fair, which means beautiful, and lie as fast as any that loves you. So if I called you beautiful, I would be lying, just like everyone else who loves you is lying to you. But my uncle being the elder man, I leave it to him. So since he's older, I'll let him lie for me, as more fit for his age and the color of his beard. I am wise enough to tell you I can board where I see occasion. So if I see the chance, I will take it. Or if you like my uncle's wit better than mine, so if you like his language or you like his words better than mine, you shall marry me. The but means if. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, the or means unless. So or if you like my uncle's wit better than mine means unless you like my uncle's wit better than mine. You shall marry me. This doesn't make sense, right? If you like mine better than his, I will marry you in spite of your teeth. And so now he's insulting her teeth. So commending my best parts to you, which is a sexual joke, his best parts. I rest yours upwards and downwards. So he's saying, I swear to be true to you either way. But the way that he says this is upwards and downwards, which is another sexual joke. Uh, or you may choose. So in other words, uh, it's your choice whether you want to marry me. Bergetto. Do you want me to translate this into Chinese? Uh, 我最甜美的甜心女主人，我可以说你很美，跟你其他追求者说谎的速度一样快，但是因为我的 uncle 比较年长，我就让他帮我说，这样比较适合他的年纪以及他胡子的颜色。我有足够的
聪明才智，看得出有机会就可以去抓。所以，除非你觉得我 uncle 的信写的比我好，不然你就会嫁给我。如果你觉得我的信比他的好，我就娶你，也不管你的牙齿怎么样。呃，我如此。把我最好的部分送上去给你，横竖我都是你的，或是由你自己有选择。Brigetto， 这是什么烂情书？呃、uh, ，So Poggio reads this, and Brigetto says, "Aha, here's stuff, Uncle," which means, "Look, the beautiful letter." 确实有料 ，which of course there is not. 呃、uh, ，So Donato replies, "Here's stuff indeed." To shame us all, pray. Whose advice did you take in this learned letter? Learned means 附思翩翩 so he's being sarcastic. And Poggio answers, "None, upon my word, but mine own." So Bergetto wrote this letter with the help of his servant, who is also apparently not very smart. Bergetto, and mine, Uncle. Believe it. Nobody's else. So Donata asks him, "Whose advice did you take?" And Bergetto says, "I took his advice and my advice." So, like, I took my own advice. I listened to myself.、Uh, believe it. Nobody's else. Twas mine own brain. I thank a good wit for it. Of course, we all know that this kind of letter is obviously written with nobody else's advice. Get you home, sir, and look. You keep within doors till I return. Remember again. At this time, the word "sir" is not polite. "Sir" just means man. So get you home, man, and look. You keep within doors till I return. So stay inside until I come back. How? Which means what? That were a jest indeed. I scorn it, in faith. You must be kidding. I'm not going to listen to you. What you do not judge me, but I do now. So now,、uh, as soon as Donato gets angry, Bergetto changes his mind. Okay, okay, I'll go. Poggio, indeed, sir, tis very unhealthy. Well, sir, if I hear any of your apish running to motions and fopperies till I come back, you are as good no. Look to it. So before I come back, I hope I don't hear that you've done anything else. 就不要再胡搞瞎搞了。呃 ，and then Donato leaves. Bergetto, Poggio, shall steal to see this horse with the head in his tail. 呃、uh, ，so now that Donato has left, Bergetto's first idea is to go see this、uh, stupid little performance. The horse with the head in its tail. Like so, obviously, this is just two people wearing a horse costume, and one person is sticking his head out of the horse's back. But to Bergetto, this is great fun, because he's an idiot. Pajo, I. But you must take heed of whipping. Your uncle told you not to leave the house. If you go, you must be careful. He will whip you. Whip you, Danny. Does take me for a child, Poggio? Come, honest Poggio. Exit, and so they leave. So that was kind of entertaining. Scene five, Act two, Scene five. Enter Friar and Giovanni. So remember, this is after Giovanni and Annabella have confessed their love for each other, and now Giovanni is meeting again with the friar.、Uh, the friar says, "Peace," which means shut up. Thou hast told a tale whose every word threatens eternal slaughter to the soul. So Giovanni has been telling the friar about what has happened, how much he loves his sister, how much his sister loves him, and so the friar says. Please be quiet. Every word you say is a danger to your soul. 
I'm sorry I have heard it. Would mine ears had been one minute deaf before the hour that thou camest to me. So he says, I wish I had gone deaf before I met you today so that he didn't have to hear the story. Oh, young man cast away by the religious number of mine order. I day and night have waked my aged eyes. Aged means old. Have waked my aged eyes above my strength to weep on thy behalf. So I've been praying and weeping and crying for you every day. And, and every night also. But heaven is angry. And be thou resolved, if you're sure this is what you want to do, thou art a man remarked to taste a mischief. You're going to meet a bad end. Look for it. So trust me, I'm sure of it. Though it come late, it will come sure. Uh, and then this next section we talked a bit about. Uh, let's look at this in detail. Here, Giovanni is trying to prove to the friar that it's okay to love his sister. Father, in this you are uncharitable. What I have done, I'll prove fit and good. Fit means proper. So I prove that this love is proper and good. It is a principle which you have taught when I was yet your scholar, that the frame and composition of the mind does follow the frame and composition of body. Okay, so what does this mean? He's going to explain. So where the body's furniture is beauty, the minds must needs be virtue. So if someone is beautiful in body, that person must also have a virtuous mind. Which allowed, so if you accept this idea, virtue itself is reason but refined. What is virtue except uh, good reason. Uh, so the idea of reason is not exactly the same as today. Today, when we talk about reason, we talk about having correct thinking, good ideas, thinking clearly. But in those days, reason means being able to see the truth, especially the religious truth. So it's not about logic. It's about seeing the right end point or the right end goal. So virtue itself is reason but refined. Virtue is reason that has been improved. Uh, the idea here seems to be that if you have reason, you can see the truth, you can see what is right. But if you have virtue, that means you are able to do what is right. So virtue is reason improved is better than reason. And love, the quintessence of that. Uh, and the essence of reason is love. Uh, in the original philosophy, love here means religious love, love of God. But here Giovanni is taking it to mean romantic love. This proves my sister's beauty being rarely fair, which means being unusually beautiful, is rarely virtuous, is also unusually virtuous. So because my sister is so hot, she must be such a good person. Chiefly in her love, and chiefly in that love, her love to me. So the entire logic goes, my sister is beautiful, therefore she is good, therefore her love is good, therefore her love for me is good. If hers to me, then so is mine to her, since in like causes are effects alike. And now, if my sister's love for me is good, I love her for the same reasons. Therefore, my love for her must also be good. And therefore, like being in love with my sister should not be a problem. Uh, I've already discussed with you why this logic is wrong. Uh, but the friar's reaction Oh, ignorance in knowledge, which is the idea is how can you know so much and understand so little? Long ago, how often have I warned thee this before? Indeed, if we were sure there were no deity, nor heaven, nor hell, then to be led alone by nature's light, as were philosophers of elder times, 
might instance some defense. So in plain English, this is if God and heaven and hell did not exist, then simply following philosophy might be justified. But tis not so. But that's not the truth. The truth is God does exist. You can't just follow philosophy. Then, madman, thou wilt find, wilt means will, you will find. Thou wilt find that nature is in heaven's positions blind. If you simply follow philosophy without religion, it's blind. You don't really see the truth. Giovanni, your age or rules you, which means you're wrong because you're old. Had you youth like mine, if you were young like I am, you'd make her love your heaven and her divine. So if you were me, you would say that Annabella's love is heaven and that she herself is a god. Like you can really see like how crazy he's going for his sister. Friar, nay, then I see thou, thou art too far sold to hell, Majola. It lies not in the compass of my prayers to call thee back. Compass means scope, fan way. So here it means power. My prayers do not have the power to call you back. Yet let me counsel thee, but still let me give you a piece of advice. Persuade thy sister to some marriage. Try to get your sister to marry somebody. Marriage? Why, that's to damn her. That's to prove her greedy of variety of lust. If she marries somebody, she will go to hell because that would mean she loves two people at the same time. Friar, oh fearful, Tiana, if thou wilt not give me leave to shrive her, at least let her confess her sins to me, lest she should die unabsolved. Uh, so the friar has no other arguments. The most he can now say is before you do whatever the fuck you want to do, at least let her confess to me so that if she somehow suddenly dies, at least she will go to heaven. This, I think, counts as foreshadowing. My fubi. If she suddenly dies. Up to this point, we have no reason to fear that she would suddenly die. So why is the friar worried about this? Will she suddenly die? We'll find out next week. <laughs>